Welcome back everybody. In this video I'm going to show you all the steps how to wall mount a TV and conceal all the wires. I'll go over three different ways to wire the electrical. You'll see me convert my existing phone line to a hardwired internet. How to connect a tenant TV as backup in case the internet goes out. And because we converted the phone lines to hardwired internet, I even go over how to still have home phone using voice over internet protocol, which allows you to make phone calls over an internet connection if you're actually still using your home phone. So buckle up because after watching this video, you might have a completely different perspective to your TV viewing options. So the way I start is by placing the furniture that's going to sit under the TV right where I want it and find the center of that furniture. I use a piece of painter's tape and draw a line marking the center with a sharpie. I will use that line to center the TV to the furniture. I also put a piece of painter's tape to mark the edges of the furniture for visual reference. This allows me to move the furniture out of my way. I'm next going to use this magnetic stud finder to find the studs in the wall. This powerful earth magnet finds the drywall screws securing the drywall to the wood studs. You just move it around until it magnetizes to a drywall screw. I'm using these other magnets to hold my mark. You can use pretty much any decently strong magnet to do this. You will see during this video why I need to know where the stud locations are. Let me show you what I did in the master bedroom. This has a different setup than the bedroom we're currently working in. There's a receptacle all the way down there, and there's another one here. But originally there was no receptacle behind this dresser. I wanted to be able to plug in things like this DVD player and clock without the wire showing. So I installed a 3 gang box. You can pick up these old work 3 gang boxes up at the big box stores. I added a receptacle that had surge protection. Then I converted the coax cable to antenna TV. I converted the phone line to internet and sent both and an HDMI cord from the DVD player up to the media plate and then to the TV of course. I put a door stop cut to size on the dresser so that when I push it back it hits the baseboard and doesn't crush the plugs. You can paint this media plate the same color as the wall. I never did that to this one because nobody looks at it from that angle in this room. You look at the TV straight on or from the other side. But as you can see I did put the media plate on that side because the door is here and you don't want to come in the room and look this way and see it. You can see the Apple TV right there. So the media plate I use is from Peerless AV. This is the model number and info at time of filming. For a quick unboxing, it comes with this media plate and this electrical box for the receptacle, which attaches with these four screws. What's cool about this media plate, it comes with a surge protected receptacle. What's different about it is if it takes an electrical surge, it gives you an audible alarm and you just have to change out the surge module. You don't have to remove the whole media plate, unwiring and replacing the whole receptacle. The paperwork comes with this actual size template you can use to mark the drywall for your cutout. At Home Depot, I noticed you can get a media plate with a non-surge protective receptacle already, or one without a receptacle, but they do sell a 15 amp surge protective receptacle separately you could just buy and use. This option costs way less than a Peerless AV1, noting that if you do take an unlikely surge hit, you would have to take everything apart to change out the receptacle. But if you are going for a less costly option, this would work just fine. So in this room, my plan A was I didn't want to put the media plate here so people who come in the room can't look this way and see it. I want to put it over here. So this is how you plan this out. I can see I have a stud running down this side of this receptacle box, then another stud running down this side of the phone jack and coax cable, and then another stud over here. Now for this receptacle, I'm going to replace it with a surge protected one. Unlike the other room I showed you, luckily there's already a receptacle behind the dresser, so that's one last thing I have to do. This will protect the game console that can sit on the dresser. I'm going to take this phone jack and coax cable connector and change it out to a CAD5e jack. This way I can hardwire the internet and use the coax for antenna TV. And then on this side of the stud, since I don't need to add a receptacle this time, I'm going to install this 2 gang low voltage mounting bracket. And then I'm going to put this recessed decor insert, it looks like this, so I can send the coax cable and the internet up the wall. And that will sit in here like this. And then I'll put the HDMI here. And then I'll finish it off with a 2 gang wall plate. I'll use this coax cable. I'll use this cat 5 e patch cord and this HDMI cable all in the wall. Now I want to bring everything here up the wall on this side of the stud and put the media plate here. And then I'll mount the TV here in the middle because this is the middle of the dresser. Then you won't be able to see the wires when you walk in the room from the door. At least that's plan A. Let's see how it goes. So now that I gave you an explanation how I'm going to run all the media wires, I'm going to explain to you how I'm going to get the electricity to this media plate. And two other ways as a reference. Now the first way, that I already started and you saw if you watched my video on how I installed these recessed lights, 
is I already ran a wire up from this electrical box. So check out that video if you want to watch exactly how I did that. But let me give you a quick overview on three different ways you can do this. In my house, they ran a wire from the breaker panel through the attic, down the wall, to this light switch electrical box. Then from this electrical box, they run one wire through the walls to all the receptacles. And of course, since there's power coming to this box, they power the light switches and run wire back up the wall to all the lights. There's three of them in this room. The one I added for the recessed lights, the one for the central light, and there's one for a switch receptacle so you can plug in a nightstand lamp on the back farthest wall. So when I added the recessed lights light switch, I ran two wires through the wall, one for the recessed lights, and one I left up in the attic for this project that you will see me drop that wire down to power the media plate receptacle. Now I'm gonna show you the second way in more detail when I go up in the attic, but you can find the wire where the incoming power comes down from the breaker panel. Then you can cut that wire and add a junction box. So the power will still come this way to power this electrical box, but then from the junction box you added in the attic, you can run a wire to the media plate for the TV. The third way you can do this that's probably the most common, and you can find plenty of YouTube videos on how to do it this way, but they have all their media wires in the receptacle behind the furniture already, and they mount a TV on the wall. And then they use these in-wall cover and power kits and in-wall low voltage cable kits to conceal the wires for the TV. That's the typical way if you're fortunate, is just use the power from the receptacle that's already there and run it up the wall. But you saw in the master bedroom, the receptacles were all the way left and right and not behind the dresser. So I had to add power. So in the attic, I cut the incoming power that was coming into the bedroom and I added a junction box and then I ran a wire down the wall to the media plate, then continue running it down to that three gang box. But like I mentioned, in this room I ran the wire up and it's waiting for me to drop back down. But I'll show you when I'm up there how to add a junction box if you have an attic and how to do it that way since you'll probably won't be adding recessed lights like I did. Now here's a shot of those kits you can buy. I wouldn't use this option in my house because you'll see me later in the video contending with fire blocking in the wall, which is a piece of wood they run horizontally to prevent fire from spreading up the wall. If my house was a two-story house with no attic access, I would use this option because the media plate cutout is much larger and it would allow me to drill a hole in the fire blocking, which you'll see me do later in this video. Okay, let's move on to the internet and antenna TV explanation. So in my house, I have this telecom distribution module. In most houses, you're gonna have an area where your phone, internet, and coax cables land at. I'm going to go through my setup and what I do every time I mount another TV on the wall and hopefully it might help you out and give you an idea for your house. Now I'm no expert on any of this, so do your own research for your project and if anybody has more information on anything I'm explaining, especially during the media part of this video, please share with everybody in the comments. So I got rid of expensive cable TV a long time ago. I stream TV from the internet, but I hardwire my network for a more dependable connection using my house's existing phone line. I use antenna TV as backup in case the internet goes down using the existing coax cables. And I use Magic Jack, which uses voice over internet protocol for my home phone. So now let me give you an overview how I do all this. So this black coax cable is coming in from outside the house. Now we're fortunate in my neighborhood and have two internet providers that I switch from one to the other. As the promotional period ends on one, I jump to the other on their promotional period, saving a lot of money. Because I don't have any cable boxes to get back, that process is very easy. In fact, one of the providers doesn't even provide TV service anymore, recommending a streaming service instead. And because there are two providers competing against each other, there's no data cap. Now this black coax cable from the outside connects to this white one. That white coax cable goes through the wall to this bedroom, which is the home office, and connects to the back of this jack. Then another white cable gets connected there and runs on the floor along the wall to where I place the cable modem. From the cable modem, I can send the internet back to that jack, but first I send it to my router. And then following this black wire, I send it back to the wall jack. And then this wire comes from that home office jack from through the wall back to the telecom distribution center, and then I connect it into a switch. From that switch, which is plugged in here, I send the internet to the different rooms. Now this is how I have home telephone still, even though I'm using the house's telephone lines for hardwired internet. I use Magic Jack. It gets its internet connection from the router above on this wire, then this phone wire that normally goes to the phone, but in a second I'll show you what I do. And then it gets plugged in here for power, which I have it plugged into a UPS for battery backup. Now this phone line, I send it to this jack. And of course, all the jacks go back to the telecom distribution center area. Now you can see this is a dual jack with double RJ11 connectors. I'm using the same wire to send and receive the phone connection. The second port has a dial tone. The magic jack is plugged into the other port. Take note that it has this brown white wire, then a solid brown wire, which is right here. You have the brown and the brown white wires. 
Then they put these two connectors changing it back to blue and blue white hitting the central pins because the central pins are always in the middle. I'll go over this more in a bit. So the magic jack is sending the phone connection into the in and it goes out all the outs. So all these wires have dial tone, bringing it to the bedrooms and everywhere else in the house where there's a phone jack. But I don't care about the other jacks. I could unplug all those wires. I just need to send it to the kitchen. The reason why I send it to the kitchen is because that's where I wanted my main base located in the middle of the house, centralizing the Bluetooth single, and it has the answering machine to retrieve our messages. But of course, technically you can retrieve your messages from any handset with today's modern phones. Now, like I just explained, the main base in the kitchen Bluetooths the telephone single to all the individual handsets, and that's what you put in the different rooms you still want home telephone in. That's why you don't need a phone connection going to all the individual phone jacks in the house, and that's what I convert to hardwired internet instead. This is one of the handsets in the master bedroom. It doesn't need to be plugged into the phone jack because it gets its phone connection by Bluetooth. It just needs to get plugged into the wall to keep it charged. So this wire is coming from an antenna I mounted up in the attic. I bought this antenna at Best Buy on sale for $100. It receives HD channels from 60 miles away. It's amplified and multi-directional. I just mounted it on a raised part of my roof on a 2x4 that the builders already had installed for bracing between two trusses. Because the antenna is not mounted outside, I won't get an HOA violation. Now the wire that comes in from the antenna gets plugged into this included booster and the booster gets plugged into this receptacle for power. The booster amplifies the single and by the way I get perfectly clear channels. And then the other wire from the booster gets plugged into the end of the splitter. And then that goes out to all the rooms. The reason why it's on the splitter is because when I first moved in and had cable, the tech explained that the splitter that's built into this telecom distribution module loses single. They claim these splitters are better. I'm going to one day buy a wall mounted rack and redo and clean up this whole area. So to recap, my TV single is coming in from the antenna from the attic, then to these splitters, then through all these coax cables to all the rooms of the house. Then the internet comes in on this black wire from the street, then on this white wire through the wall to the home office, it gets sent back on this wire and plugged into the switch. And then from the switch, it gets sent out to all the rooms. So you're gonna see me add one more internet connection for the bedroom on wall mounting a TV in soon. And for the telephone connection, because it's not hooked up from the street, it comes in from the home office from the magic jack. And because it's plugged in the in port of this module, internally it gets distributed out the out ports from these wires to all the rooms. So my next step is I got to find which one of these wires is going to the bedroom I'm working in. I explained all this so you can understand as I show you that next step. I'm going to explain two ways to do this. Now one way is in the room I'm working in, I take off the plate and I see what color wires going into the phone jack. So now I know I need to look for a blue wire at the telecom distribution module. I take the phone base from the kitchen and as you can see, it does get a line. That's how I know that the line is good now again i don't need to send the phone line over to this room only to the kitchen where the base is i'm just using the base right now to trace the line so i'm going to bring the headset and on it it'll say that there's no line once i disconnect the right blue wire so let me show you what i mean so as you can see i only have three more blue wires going into the telecom distribution module because i've already pulled two out one is for the master bedroom and one is for the family room. So now one of these three are gonna be for the bedroom I'm working on. So what I do is I pull one out and then I check to see if it says I have no phone line, but I still do. So I know it's not this one, so I'm gonna put it back and I'm gonna pull this one out. And then that must be it. So if I push here in speakerphone, nothing, it's just making a sound. And if I stick it back, I got a phone line again. Now the second way, if you don't have a house telephone to help you identify which wires are going from where your phone wires land in your house to the room you're looking to hardwire the internet and you don't mind spending a little money, you can use one of these tone and probe wire tracers. You pull out the wire going in the in of your telecom distribution module to disconnect the telephone connection. Then you just pick the proper connector, exampled here with an RJ11 plug from the transmitter and plug it into the jack. Then take the receiver over to the telecom distribution module and use it to probe the wires individually until you get an audible tone once you found the wire you are locating. Now I'm not a telecom network or cable technician, so take this next explanation with a grain of salt. There are two standards for wiring ethernet cables, T568A and T568B. Now the USOC standard for old telephone jacks is this third one. So my understanding is in residential, they usually use A. 
Because if you look at the four, you know, pair one and pair two, the four middle colors, it matches the USOC standard old telephone jack wiring and the four colors are all the same. So when you put an RJ11 phone plug, it only uses the four middle wires, but it'll match the RJ45 on the other side. Depending on where my wires are plugged in, the wiring order is different. Now I can easily change this RJ45. They don't even have the insulation in here, but I'm trying to save myself a step and it's really close to A. Just pin six, which is solid orange, and pin seven, which is white brown, needs to be flip-flopped to these colors because the colors don't matter. The data doesn't care what color it's going down, but the two ends need a match. So I'm gonna match the CAD 5E jack to this RJ45 plug. So let's go try that. So on the back of the bag that the 5E module comes in, gives you a little bit of directions and a little wiring diagram. And you can see the blue wire coming in and on the module itself, you can see the AB and all the wiring diagram. You can see where the orange is and the white brown. I need to flip flop that. So instead of making this orange wire come here, I'm gonna bring it to the white brown and I'm gonna take the white brown wire and I'm gonna wire it into the orange. And once I do that, I'll test it and see if it worked. Okay, I first start by unscrewing the four screws attaching the wires to the jack. Then I straighten as best as possible the individual eight wires. You can find YouTube videos that are more of a tutorial focusing how to punch down a jack. I'm just giving you a fast forward play by play or this video will be five hours long. But this is not rocket science. As I previously explained, I'm just matching the wire colors to the wire diagram that's on the packaging, flip flopping those two wires to match the other end at the telecom distribution module. You insert the wires into these different slots, pushing them as far as you can, and then using a punch down tool. It seats the wire and that makes the connection. The punch down tool also has a blade to cut the wire, which needs to be facing to the outside. So as you see me punching down each wire, I give the wire a wiggle and then I pull it out because the blade doesn't always cut all the way through. I'm using a non-impact punch down tool. And finally, you connect this cap and it has a slot so you can position the wire coming out the back and that's it, it's pretty easy. So this is what I use to test the network once I'm done. So what it does is it checks your wiring to make sure everything is correct. So I'm gonna put this on the out and I'm gonna plug this and turn it on. And see what it does? It goes down one through eight. One, two, three, like that. And then you hook up this on the other side and see if it matches. So you just let that stay running. So now we determine which CAD 5E wire goes to the bedroom. You plug this end to that one. It's hard to see, but see how it's five, six, seven, eight. You want this to be going in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're good. If this was going out of order, if it was jumping from one to five, whatever, any random order that you know you wired it wrong and you gotta try again. So now I know it tested out correctly, I connect the coax cable by just simply screwing it in on the back, I push the wires in the wall, and then screw in the two screws to secure it. And then finally of course I install the wall plate and screw in those two screws. So pretty cool right? We now have hardwired internet and antenna TV wired to this bedroom using the existing coax cable and CAT 5E wire. Now if your house was built after 2000, that's when CAT 5E came about and you probably have that kind of wire for your phone lines and you can convert it to internet. 1995 for CAT 5. I want to quickly also note that you can use your existing coax cables for a hardwire connection to transmit the internet over to a room if you live in an older house that doesn't have Cat5 wiring or higher. So back up in the attic, here's the wire that's coming from the breaker panel. It goes down the wall to the electrical light switch box. To add a junction box, you cut it and you splice in another wire and send it over to where the TV is through the top plate of the wall framing down to the media plate receptacle. Now make sure you check with your local electrical codes but this is what an electrical junction box looks like open. This one you nail to the truss and it contains all the wires with this cover. This is a fast forward demonstration for a visual, but you cut the wire and then you add another wire that would go to the TV receptacle. You simply connect all the white neutral wires to each other, all the hot black wires to each other, and all the bare ground wires to each other. For this electrical connection, I would personally use a wire nut if I had enough slack versus a lever actuated connector, but either one would work. I'm just using a waggle for this quick demonstration. If you don't have enough slack, then I would use an inline two wire splicing connector and add a pigtail still making sure everything is contained within the junction box. And this is what you're left with. The original wire going straight and the added wire making the leg of the T. Again, all the connections contained within the junction box. 
This is a shot when I did the master bedroom. You keep it above the insulation so you can find it. You should also label it with a sharpie with the breaker number on the outside of the cover. Now back to this project, listen to my talk through in the attic. Coming up here, I brought one wire over to the recessed lights. And then I ran a second wire going across here. And it's waiting for me right here to drop down. Now I'm a little concerned about something that I didn't notice before. So here is where that coax cable and CAD 5E cable is going down to the right of that stud from my perspective looking down. On this side, see how you have an exterior wall right there? And usually what I've noticed in my house, that whenever there's an exterior wall, the wall's not as wide. And I'm hoping that recessed media plate where the outlet box is, is gonna be wide enough. So we'll see, I might have to stick something in the wall and take a little depth measurement first before I start cutting that hole. If that doesn't work, I'll have to put the media recess plate back in that same channel here. So we'll see what happens. You see, you can see where that top plate is and then right there is the exterior wall. So there's very little, they must put just little wood slats to put the drywall up onto the cement wall, exterior wall. So taking a measurement, once I got downstairs, I can see it's close to four inches, so I'm definitely gonna have to put it on the right side. All right, here's the TV. It's a Vizio V-Series 50 inch, has Apple HomeKit. My house is in the Apple ecosystem, so I try to get all my home products HomeKit compatible. I bought this TV on Black Friday 2019, and I'm finally mounting it at the end of March 2020. Let's unbox it and the tilting wall mount in a flash. So this is why I'm gonna have to go to a plan B. I wanted to put everything over here but I'm gonna to have to put it over here now. And the reason why is you come around this corner, you can see this is an interior wall, but then it turns into an exterior wall. So because that's an exterior wall over here, I could put that recessed media plate here, but I would have to chisel away at the concrete block to accept the depth of the outlet box part of the recessed media plate. But that's a little bit too much work. So if I put the low voltage bracket here and send it up to the recessed media plate on this side, it'll be on an interior wall and I'll have plenty of room. So I don't feel like chiseling away at cement block. Now the only problem is when you come in this door and you look this way, you're gonna see that recessed media plate. So I'm probably gonna have to paint the outer rim the same color as the wall paint. Something else I wanted to point out is I have a light switch here and an outlet. So I took a measurement, this is 32 inches. When you come around the corner here, take the measurement from here, 32 inches lands about right here. So I'm gonna be sending the wires up about here and I think I'm gonna clear that light switch, but it's just something else I wanted to point out that you have to consider what's on the other side of the wall besides cement. So this TV comes with the holes right here and you gotta just find where you wanna line up the holes. All TV mounting brackets come with a million screws. So you can kind of try to find which one works best for you. And it comes with some you can use for mounting it, the bracket on the wall, going into the stud or using these anchors. I'll probably use something different. Maybe I'll use some of these. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bolt this bracket down close to the edge of the TV, because that's gonna help guide me when I have to figure out where I'm gonna put it on the wall. So I took some measurements of the master bedroom, and my dresser is 41 inches high, and I took my measurements of how far the TV was from the dresser, 18 inches. The bottom of the TV was 59 inches, and I like the height that I put the master bedroom TV at. So I wanna try to replicate that. Now this dresser is 39 inches. So, but I'm still gonna keep it at the 59. So I need to measure up from the floor. I'm gonna put a piece of tape on the wall that's 59 inches. So I go ahead and take that measurement and place that tape. Listen to this next talk through, how I determine the mounting plate placement. So I set my laser up and right in the middle of where the dresser hits, I hit one line and the 59 inches on the other. Now I'm gonna show you how I line up the bracket right in the middle and how to line up where the TV's gonna hit. So it does come with this mounting template and I'm kind of just using it for a second because I want to see, here's the middle. It looks like 
these holes line up pretty close to this stud. So I'm gonna be able to hit this stud because I wanna get at least two bolts into the stud. And I have a feeling this is just gonna be drywall, but over here is gonna be into that cement, we'll see. Because if it isn't into that cement, then I can go back to plan A. But I don't really use this and I'll show you why. I actually use the bracket itself and then I just let my laser hit the middle here. It already has a, a leveling bubble on it. And then remember, I want this bracket to be close to the line because where this bracket lines up with the TV is right at the bottom of the TV. So it just helps me judge. So I'm gonna lower that close to the line here, just off by a little bit. And that doesn't have to be exact. And then I'm lining the middle up and making sure the bubble's centered. Now check out how the mounting plate is not sitting flat on the wall. Can anybody guess why? Yep, that's where the two walls transition from interior to exterior and the drywall's not sitting flat. So it's making it difficult to hold to mark my drill holes. I need to get a few holes marked so I can start a few screws. That will allow the screws to help me hold the mounting plate to mark the other drill holes accurately. Now remember, these two screws are hitting the stud, so I'm gonna drill some pilot holes to make it easier to screw the two lag bolts that came in the packaging into the wood stud. I'm using a drill bit with a smaller diameter than the lag bolts, so I still get a good bite when I screw them in. While I'm holding the mounting plate with my left hand, I start the two lag bolts with my right hand now that I drill those two pilot holes. Then I grab my drill and screw them mostly in. I don't want to screw the lag bolts too tight because I want to still be able to move the mounting plate into position, which you're seeing me do here, lightly bumping it with my level to center it to my laser line. Then I place my level under the mounting plate to level it because I don't trust a smaller one built into the mounting plate for final marking and placement. Now this was almost impossible to do before I put the two middle screws in. The bracket was wobbling back and forth and I couldn't hold it steady with one hand to mark it with the other. This mark on the top right is still looking good, so I marked the other holes. I'm making sure my marks are in the center of the oval holes in the mounting plate and my leveling bubble is still in the center. Now I remove one of the lag bolts and I just let the mounting plate stay there while I work on the other holes. Now this is how I determine what fastener I'm going to use. I push my straight pick tool right into my marked hole and then just from experience and feel I can determine what's on the other side. These two holes are hitting nothing, so I'm going to use these drywall toggle anchors. Let me show you how they work. Now you technically don't need to drill a hole like I'm doing, but I find it easier to push them in the wall by pre-drilling and less drywall debris gets in the mechanism that allows the toggle bar to swing open. You just screw the anchor in, then when you screw the screw in, the toggle bar swings into a position to clamp on the back of the drywall. It hangs up to 100 pounds. So now that you see how they work, I'm going to install them on the right side. I drill two holes just big enough to accept the part of the anchor you push in, not wider than the deep threads they have you use to screw them in. So now listen to the sound when I push the pick into these left holes. I can hear a distinct clicking noise that I can tell is cement block. I use my finger to mark the depth with the pick going in, and you can see it's just a few inches. So we have to stick with plan B and install the media plate on the right side. It's not a big deal. It's just what's preferred to keep it out of view of everybody entering the room. So before I keep going, I gotta find the fire block. Whenever you have studs, they put a piece of wood going horizontal so that if there's a fire in the wall, it can't get to the ceiling in the attic and start spreading to the rest of the house. So you always have to drill a hole through that fire block to run your wires to the recessed media plate. So I kind of want to see where it is. And it's a lot easier sliding the stud finder up and down with this wall plate out of the way. So my stud finder is saying it's pretty wide, but I don't believe that that's true, but we'll see. I'll cut an exploratory hole and look down to see exactly where the fire block wood is going because I want to be able to cut the recessed media plate hole in an area where it's not gonna be above the screen, of course. So to determine exactly where that piece of wood is, I'll do a little hole so I can look down and see, and then I'll do the bigger hole after that. At least it was easier to slide this up and down. Can't do this if the this wall plate was in the way. There's no way it's this wide, but who knows, maybe they put two pieces of wood. We'll find out. So next I want to secure the mounting plate to the wall. Using the washers that came in the packaging, I start screwing the two toggle anchor screws in by hand. Then I screw the bottom one 95% in with the drill, check for level, then tighten both of them up all the way tight. One last check I'm still level, and I screw in the bottom lag bolt. Then I tighten up the top one. Next, I drill the holes for the cement block side using a masonry bit. I have my drill on its hammer drill setting. I'm using these Topcon masonry screws also with the washers. And finally, I drill the last two screws in. So you got to see three different kind of fasteners. 
a drywall toggle anchor, a lag bolt right into the studs, and masonry screws. So if that fire block is right there, I'm cutting it close. So like, you know, depending on where the TV hits, I gotta put that recessed media plate and I need to have enough room. So let's hang the TV next. I wanna take some blue tape and put it around the TV so I can get an outline of exactly where the TV is to the bracket. So putting these mounting brackets on is real easy. The packaging for these TV mounts always include different size fasteners and washers. You just pick the screws that works best for your application. If the screw bottoms out, you pick one that was too long. Also note, you don't need to crank down the screw super tight. So next, my wife helped me hang the TV so I can put painter's tape marking the outer edge of the TV. I normally wouldn't do this step, but with my stud finder giving me weird readings, I'm being extra cautious before I start cutting holes in the wall. This doesn't have to be exact, just good enough to give me an outline of the TV. I also marked where the TV is thicker because I want the media plate to be above that. It seems like I have just enough room and everything's clearing where the media plate's going to be. Here's a shot of the TV off. As you can see, it does barely fit in there, but I'm going to cut an exploratory hole and really see if that fire blocking is really that wide or two pieces. So next, I use my level and I put the top of the template paper for the media plate against it. Once I have it level and positioned between the top piece of tape which represents the top of the TV and where I think the fire blocking is, I put push pins to hold it. I tried drawing along the paper, but it was hard to keep the line straight. So instead, I use a pencil to mark the four corners. Then I use my level to connect the corners. This was much easier. Next, I use my jab saw to cut an exploratory hole. This will let me verify the position of the fire blocking, but still allow me to realign the media plate to my most ideal position. Normally, I drill a screw in the drywall and use it as a handle so I don't drop the piece I'm cutting down in the wall. If that happens, it could get in the way when I go to drill the holes for the wires. But there was luckily a piece of paper backing that wasn't cut all the way through, holding onto it, so I was able to grab it and pull it out. Now that I have my exploratory hole, I stick my tape measure down it to measure where the fire blocking really is. As I was expecting, it was not where the stud finder indicated. It was much lower, and I use a piece of painter's tape to mark it. So there's nothing here. I feel like the seam between two pieces of drywall right here, so I don't know why it's triggering my stud finder. But I take my tape measure, stick it down the hole, and 28 inches down, I hit something. And if I take my stud finder, it does say something's in this area. I don't know why they would have a fire block so low. The only thing I can think of is because there's an outlet here. When I did this light switch, it was about right here, but I've never encountered one this low in my house yet. Now, when I make this hole bigger for the media plate, I like to take my uh, phone and I can shoot a picture up at the flash and down, and I can really verify what the stud finder is finding. So that's what I'll do. Now, some people, when they hit the fire block, they cut a hole here in the drywall, use their drill to drill the holes, and then patch the wall. But I have a special tool, I don't need to do that. So let's get to the next step and cut this hole wider so we can take some pictures. I'm just repeating what I did the first time, using push pins to hold the paper template, using a pencil to mark the corners, and then my level to connect those marks to make the outline. As you can see, now I know the fire blocking is much lower, I've repositioned the template a little lower and to the right. And finally, use my drywall jab saw to cut the hole for the media plate. With the smaller hole there, I use that to grab the piece of drywall from falling in the wall. So now I take my pictures and this is what they revealed. The right side has nothing, but the left side has those coax and CAD 5E wires. This is looking down at the fire blocking and you can see one hole is already drilled into it. And looking up you can see the coax cable and CAD5E wires coming from the attic and an extra hole filled in with fire barrier sealant. Here's a shot of the drywall toggle anchors I used clamped onto the drywall. Originally I was going to use my flex auger bit, but then I realized it's not going to drill a hole wide enough for my HDMI cable connector. At Home Depot and Electrical Isle where the electrical tools are, they do have different sizes and one with a wider diameter auger head, but you'll still get to see me use my flex bit later in the video. So I go with a plan B instead and I use these bit extensions. They have this quick release that I use to lock in a second extension and then my one inch spade bit. As you can see, the one inch spade bit is wide enough for the HDMI connector. I'm gonna stick my drill with my arm in the wall and drill the holes. Watch me do that next. So I carefully maneuver the drill in the media plate cutout hole. I spin it around and I set it down on the fire blocking. I next clamp a flashlight to the side of the cutout and then I use my iPod touch to align my drill. I'm looking at the screen making sure I'm positioning the spade bit in the center of the fire blocking. Then I start drilling. Drilling through an inch and a half piece of wood takes some time, so you let the spade bit do all the work just giving it a light push until you punch through. 
Here's a shot so you can see how it looks after the first hole. So now I just repeat the process. I use my camera looking at the screen to position the spade bit where I want it, then move it out of the way to drill the next hole. It's really not that hard. You just want to make sure you're drilling in the middle of the 2x4 so you don't pooch through the side of the drywall. Here's a shot so you can see how it looks after drilling the second hole. I'm going to fast forward the video for this third hole, but for the fourth hole you're going to see me use my flex bit. I wanted to mention for this third hole, it took a little angling of the drill because the drill battery was hitting those toggle anchors. For this fourth hole, I removed the flashlight that I clamped to the side of the media plate cut out. Then I maneuvered my drill out of the wall. I could have removed the extensions to make this easier, but with a little twisting and turning you can get it out. Now with my flex bit attached to my drill, I verify that I'm drilling where I want the next hole with the camera, and I drill the fourth hole. I don't need four holes, but I'll use this smaller hole for the coax cable, the two other holes for the HDMI and Cat5e patch cord, and leave the fourth hole as a spare in case I want to run another HDMI cord or anything else in the future. So now it's time to install the two gang low voltage mounting bracket. I want to line it up with the adjacent box, so after removing the plate, I use my level to line up the actual cutout hole from that box and draw a level line. I then place the bracket backwards and use my straight pick to mark through the holes it has pre-drilled in it. Then use my level to connect those marks to have my cutout outline. I take my drywall jab saw and make quick work of it and cut out my hole. I next install the low voltage mounting bracket. I turn the screw by hand because these brackets are made out of plastic and they use a straight edge screw not a Phillips screw. As you turn the screw, the swing clamp flips up and clamps to the back of the drywall. I go ahead and put that other plate back on. I next turn the power off. I want to drop the electrical wire that I explained I pre-wired when I installed the recessed lights for this room down next. I first drill a hole in the top plate. Then I verify there's no power with my voltage tester. I remove the connectors and feed the wire in the hole I just drilled. Back downstairs, I pull the wire out of the media plate cutout, I reinstall my connectors, wind up the wire and stick it back in the wall. I can now flip the breaker back on, which allows me to turn the lights back on for this room. I remove the painter's tape and I'm now ready to feed the wires through the fire blocking. Once again, I start by clamping my flashlight so I can see in the wall. Then I take my flex rod and use my camera to find the smaller hole I want to use first and insert the flex rod in that hole. I next go down to the low voltage bracket and grab the flex rod and feed it up and out of the bracket. I next take the coax adapter that was on the old one that I removed and use it to keep debris from getting inside the coax cable connector as I pull it through the fire blocking. After tying my pull line to the flex rod, I tie the other end to the coax adapter which is also helping me have something to tie the line to. Then I add electrical tape folding the end of the tape for easier removal. I am now ready to pull the coax cable up to the media plate. I start by pushing everything in the wall, then get on my step stool and slowly pull the flex rod up. It needs a little wiggle to get through the hole in the fire blocking, but I easily get it fed through the wall. I'm now ready to repeat the process for the CAD5e cord next. After sticking the flex rod through the next hole, I again pull it out of the wall. This time I use electrical tape to wrap around the wire and plug to protect it and tape it directly to the flex rod folding over the end of the tape for easier unwinding. I again push it through the wall, then back up on the step stool pulling it through the fire blocking and out the media plate cut out. Here's a shot after the first two pulls. Now it's time for the final wire. Let's feed the HDMI cable through the wall. You guys know the drill by now. I insert the flex rod in the chosen hole, pull it out of the bracket. I again use electrical tape to attach the HDMI cable directly to the rod, making sure I protect the connector by wrapping the tape over it. I pull it up through the fire blocking and I'm finished pulling the three wires through the wall. Now for the electrical. After turning the power back off and a double check with my voltage tester, I take off the connectors clean up the jacket with my scissors, and strip the insulation to my desired length. I next feed the wire in the receptacle electrical box. I add back the lever connectors because this search protected receptacle is pre-wired with wires that come out the back of it versus having terminal screws. I connect the black wire to the black wire, white wire to the white wire, and the bare ground to the green wire. I tuck the wires back in the electrical box, then use my drill to screw in the two screws 95% of the way, then my Phillips to complete securing the receptacle to the electrical box. I next wind up the electrical wires. I finally grab the media plate and position the electrical box on the mounting studs and screw in the four screws. That finished up the electrical part of this project and now the TV will be surge protected. I next feed the three wires through the opening. As you see me securing the media plate and getting close to seeing the completed project, please hit the thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you like this video. I next tuck the electrical wires in the wall and insert the media plate in its cutout. I next plug my receptacle tester in and flip the power back on to ensure everything is working correctly. Then I take my drill and tighten the screws 95% of the way in. The wings on the back of the media plate clamp onto the back of the drywall and that's what secures it. I use my Phillips screwdriver to tighten the screws the last 5%. This allows me to feel when it's secure but not too tight. I next give the plate edge a quick painting because as you know I wasn't able to install it on the other side. 
I also painted the inside of this left side a few inches in because I noticed you can see the white inside part of the media plate when you look at it from the side when you walk into the room. I'll show you a longer shot at the end of the video so you can see how this came out. I next installed this Apple TV mount on the wall. It allows the Apple TV to slide in or out, but what I like about it is, it keeps it away from the heat of the TV. You really don't want it pressing against the TV, or just floating behind the TV being held by its own wires. I placed my level on top of the mount and marked the screw holes. I put a piece of painter's tape to catch the drywall dust, drill the two holes, insert the anchors, remove the tape, and baby wipe any last debris. I next tap the anchors all the way in until it's flush with the drywall with the rubber side of my mallet. I install the mount, hand starting the two screws, and with my level on top of the mount, I use my drill to screw in the two screws. With that completed, let's move on to the media wires below. I start with the HDMI cable. I plug it into the back of the wall plate and then use my electrical tape just to make sure it stays plugged in. I push the excess HDMI cable in the wall. I hand start the two screws and then I use my drill to screw them 95% in. I next push the excess coax cable and cat 5 e wire in the wall. Then I feed them through the recess insert. I'm gonna use a 90 degree coax F type adapter to make it easier to make the connection. I hand tighten the two screws and then I use my drill to screw them 95% in. After using my Phillips screwdriver to tighten the four screws 98% tight, I feed the wires through the plate and use it to align everything, then tighten the screws completely, finally installing the four screws that secure the plate. I want to match the two wall plates, so I switch out the one for the CAD 5E and coax cable to a matching nylon 3 8 larger one. I plug in the RJ45 connector, then screw tight the coax cable, and that's it. The media wires are run through the wall and that part of the project is now complete. To finish up the work in the attic, I used some great stuff fire block foam sealant and sealed the penetration around the wires I ran from the light switch electrical box up to the attic. Then I'm going to use these cable staples to secure the wire. After cutting the electrical tape I used to hold the two wires together during the pool, I go ahead and use my hammer to install the staple. I secure the wire a few inches from where it comes up through the top plate and then again close to where it heads back down to the media plate. I seal that penetration around the wires and here's a shot where you can see where it comes up, staple, staple and then back down. I put back the insulation and the attic work is now complete. I next shut the power off one last time. I want to switch out this receptacle for a surge protected one. You will also see me use another nylon wall plate that's 3 8 larger so it matches the other two. I'm not going to do a play by play of this change out because this is not directly part of this project. I just wanted to show you that in a room where you have one or two electronic devices you want to surge protect and don't want to use a surge protected power strip, a surge protected receptacle is a perfect solution. So after installing the new plate, turning the power back on, double checking it's wired correctly, it's done. So let's recap everything before mounting the TV. We converted the CAD 5E wire that was being used for a phone jack to hardwire the internet. The existing coax cable that was there for cable TV, we converted it to antenna TV. We ran an HDMI cord up to the TV through the wall in case she wants to use something like a game console. We switched out the receptacle to a surge protected one. We installed a bracket to mount the Apple TV. Then we installed the recessed media plate, which has the internet, antenna TV, and an HDMI cord coming from below. And the media plate also has a surge protected receptacle. So next I insert the Apple TV into its mounting bracket and flip the power cord and the HDMI cord over it and to the side. I next plug the CAD 5E cord in so it's hardwired with the internet and now it's finally time to hang the TV. So with help again from my wife, the TV is finally hung on the wall. Now for the wires, I don't want to put them tight to this area of the TV in case heat dissipates from here, so I keep everything above that. I plug the TV and the Apple TV into the receptacle. The two HDMI cords, one is from the Apple TV and the other one is from below behind the dresser. I'm using zip ties to keep the wires wrapped neatly. One of the HDMI cords is too long and has a blue design on it, but you'll see me switch it out for a shorter solid black one soon. The coax cable plugs directly into the TV. I always make sure I purchase a TV that has a TV tuner built into it or the antenna won't work. I want to next hide these straps that you use to unlock the TV brackets from the mounting plate. So I'm going to use these command hooks. I just hook the strap and when it's high enough on the back of the TV, I stick it. I finish up with the second one and now you can't see them hanging down anymore, but I can find them easily next time I want to take down the TV. I give the TV a quick cleaning with some screen cleaner and I'm next going to show you the antenna and Apple TV displaying channels. Here's a fast forward so you can see in my area I get quite a few over the air channels. If the internet goes out, I still have TV in my house. Living in Florida with storms, I can tell you quite a few times a year, I'm glad I made the effort to install the antenna in the attic. And this is how we watch TV normally with YouTube TV. 
Having a streaming device, of course we have our purchased movies and all the other streaming services we subscribe to. For the cost of cable TV, you get so much more. Going forward in time just for fun, here's some shots of the room after it was painted a different color. You have to have great lighting to pull off these dark and bold colors. As my daughter got older, she wanted a darker green from what she originally picked in middle school. As you can see, this is the dark green around the receptacle and the media wires. Here's a shot after I rehung the TV back up after the painting. I did switch out that one long HDMI cord that had the blue design on it to a smaller solid black one. Again, keeping it tucked away from the TV's ventilation. My one regret that you can learn from my project is to purchase a black wire for your internet connection, not yellow. Here's a shot of everything plugged in. Now I was thinking of using something like this to camouflage the yellow wire, or just repooling it. But as you can see, when you walk in the room and you look right, you barely see it. And by the way, only I notice it. No one else looks in there or cares. Now let's go back in time to after I completed the project. So that's it guys, how do you think it came out? I love wall hanging TVs concealing the wires in the wall. It's so nice not putting the TV on the dresser like the old days. Hopefully I gave you some ideas and know-how for your project. I cut cable and home phone many years ago and with the savings, I hardwire stream with YouTube TV and many other streaming services. All a lease cable box can do besides waste your money is TV viewing. A streaming device like Apple TV can do so much more. Here's some links of other projects I did to remodel this bedroom. I really hope you guys like this video. If so, please hit the thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Also hit the bell icon so you can receive notification for my next video. Bye everybody!